Hey guys, JC Perez here of allstarcharts.com and welcome to the show. Shout out Star Charts TV for having me on. We've been doing this now for a few months and it's fun. Uh, we take questions from everybody. We look at the current markets. And of course, I always wanna make sure that there's a lesson, right? Cause let's say you hate my charts and you don't agree with anything I have to say, that's fine. At the very least, I could tell you about a lesson that I have had to learn the hard way. So that's what we wanna do here. Number one, a lesson. Number two, we look at charts. And number three, uh, we take some questions. So let's get into it. Um, the first lesson of the day for me is to keep an open mind. Keep an open mind. You know, and it's hard for humans to really be able to do this and to let the ego go uh, and admit that maybe we got it wrong. And, and it goes beyond just that. It's about keeping an open mind to possibilities. That if we've learned anything from this market is that freaking nothing surprises me anymore. You know, if you had crude oil trading below zero, kudos to you. But I'm pretty, I certainly did not. <laughs> and I know a lot of my smart friends didn't either. So needless to say, keep an open mind to all sorts of possibilities. Something that you think can't go any lower, probably could. You know, something you think can't go any higher, probably could. Something you think can't completely turn around on a dime, most definitely could. Um, trends persist, trends change, correlations change. And I think it's important to keep an open mind. You know, maybe you're used to a certain correlation. You're like, this doesn't make any sense. How long are you gonna fight that before you say, hey, the correlation has probably changed. Maybe I shouldn't dramatically uh, uh, think about my portfolio because of this one correlation, right? So the point is, keep an open mind, be, um be open to all possibilities uh not just in a trade that you're in but in the inner market relationships that you're analyzing the breast statistics whatever the case might be um don't be closed-minded right and talk to people who are making the opposite bet as you right if you're if you're bullish and you're buying something talk to those that are doing the opposite and they're selling it right uh keep an open mind and be willing to listen you know, uh, as, as I think it was, uh, it was Jeff DeGraff who recently said, I, I tell my kids that they have, uh, they only have one mouth, but two ears. That's God telling you to listen, <laughs> listen more. And I think that's really the lesson here for the market, right? Listen to the message of the market. There's wisdom in the market. There's a reason why they're buying and selling these securities. Later on, we may or may not find out. A lot of times news comes out way after the fact. Oh, wow, that's why price was moving this fund blew up or that drug got approved or whatever the case may be. Somebody knows, right? The market is moving and then the news uh, ultimately comes out. Sometimes it's not even company news. Sometimes it's just positioning by uh, institutions that are unwinding and those unwinds happen real quick because when the margin clerk says you're done, you're done. And you're gonna see that on the price and later on we found out that XYZ financial blew up, right? And that happens every day. So be open-minded. Uh, the market's going to do things every single day that you don't expect it to do. So expect it to do those things, right? So you're never surprised. All right, that's my rant. Uh, let's get into some charts. Uh, let's see if we could do this. All right, so what are we working with here? We got the S&P 500 running into its 161.8% extension target, guys. So um, we're looking at the high from, from last year, right? And now we're looking at the low. Uh, excuse me, the high from February last year down to the low, uh, coronavirus crash, the 161.8% extension of that uh, has just been hit. And I wouldn't make that big of a deal about it if it wasn't for the fact that uh, the S&P industrials also hit their extension level. So you got the S&P 500 hitting its target. You got S&P industrials hitting its target. Oh, wow, what do you know? The global Dow also hitting its target. Let me get myself out of the way here. I'll get me out of the way so you can see the components. So this is the global Dow, US, Japan, Great Britain, France, Germany, Switzerland, China, India, Spain, Hong Kong, Brazil, Canada. These are all the top holdings. I think it's pretty good weighting there. Boom, just hit that Fibonacci extension level from those 2000, 2000 and 2007, 08 highs down to the 09 lows. So um, global Dow, S&P industrials, uh, the S&P 500, all hitting upside objectives. Meanwhile, uh, what's happening internally? What's happening internally is that high beta stocks are uh, underperforming, right? This has been a beta chase the whole time. High beta stocks outperforming the entire rally. This time it's different. We are seeing different things that we hadn't seen before. 
consumer staples are outperforming, right? So when this is consumer staples relative strength inverted. So as the black line's going up, that's staples underperforming. As the black line's moving down, that's consumer staples outperforming. These are things that we're gonna do regardless of how bad the economy is, smoke cigarettes, drink beers, Coca-Cola, potato chips, right? All those things, cigarettes, all that, consumer staples, we're still gonna brush our teeth and wash our dishes, right? So consumer staples tend to underperform as this line goes up, that staples underperforming as the market does well. And then it tends as to outperform, right? The ratio going down as the market is under pressure, right? That's this classic behavior of staples. Well, with new highs in the S&P 500, we're seeing higher lows in consumer staples relative, right? These lower highs represent higher lows in staples relative. Again, something we haven't seen in a while. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in these slides, please email info at allstarcharts.com. Make sure to include the password. I give a lot of presentations around the globe. Uh, so if you wanna make sure to get this presentation, info at allstarcharts.com, password, it's different. Password is, it's different. And um, something else that's different is the Aussie yen also not making new highs uh, with the S&P 500, right? So again, another correlation, uh, very highly correlated with risk and we are not making new highs. Um, that is evident, that's just like the high beta rolling over, staples outperforming. All of this is signifying the same thing. Underneath the surface, we are seeing things that we haven't seen in a while. Underperformance out of Aussie yen, underperformance out of high beta stocks, um, outperformance out of consumer staples. What about other things we haven't seen in a while that's different this time? Gold stopped going down, do you notice? Gold stopped going down, bonds stopped going down. Literally, gold, bonds were the only thing that's been worse over the last year than gold. Gold's been horrible, but bonds have actually somehow been worse. Yen also getting slaughtered during this uh, stock rally and, and risk on uh, environment, and they stopped going down. They stopped going down. Bonds stopped going down. Gold stopped going down. Yen stopped going down. How about the divergences in the NASDAQ, right? Failure to hold these former highs from February could prove to be catastrophic for the NASDAQ. With new highs in the queues, the composite did not make new highs, not to mention that just a fraction of new 52-week highs uh, were seen on these new on, on, on this rally than we did on the prior rally earlier in the first quarter. You could also see it in the uh, uh, it, when you compare it to the New York Stock Exchange composite. Let's remember the New York Stock Exchange composite has a lot more value stocks there, a lot more international exposure. Remember the largest 100 components uh, over half of the largest 100 components on the New York Stock Exchange composite are actually foreign companies, they're ADRs. The NASDAQ doesn't have that, doesn't have that value exposure. It's a lot of tech, a lot of growth, obviously. Higher highs in the composite in New York, lower highs in the NASDAQ. You can see it in the advanced decline line too. New York Stock Exchange advanced decline line, new highs, NASDAQ lower highs, right? See it all over the place. How about regional banks making new multi-month lows relative to REITs? Haven't seen that in a while. This ratio has a very high correlation with interest rates. So if you're wondering where interest rates are going, new two month lows for banks relative to REITs. About small caps also running into this extension level. These are the 2018 highs down to the 2020 lows, right? And we hit that extension level. So if small caps are below 221, we want nothing to do with them, nothing to do with them. You know, tactic, this is structurally speaking. Tactically, you know, we've been talking about staying away from small caps if we're below the February highs, and that's been advantageous. If they're to break, if they hold below 221, it's a big problem. I think it's a big problem. Look at the divergence. New highs in the S&Ps, lower highs in small caps, lower highs in micro caps. And like we said, if we're below those February highs, that's a big problem. If we're below 221, that's an even bigger problem. And then you can see this as you continue down the... Down the list of indexes, here we're looking at the NASDAQ 100 making new highs, at least temporarily, and then the NASDAQ next gen 100. So these are the next 100 securities outside of the NASDAQ 100 that are in the NASDAQ composite. Nowhere near making new highs and hitting new relative lows, uh, new year to date relative lows for the next gen. So again, down the cap scale, we're seeing a problem. Another heads up has been Bank Nifty. Notice how throughout 2018, European banks and US banks were declining, but Bank Nifty was putting in higher lows, seeing like, hey, all is well. Like Kevin Bacon at the N Animal House, all is well, remain calm, right? That was Bank Nifty back in 2018. Sure enough, 2019 was a heck of a year, 
And then last year when the uh, US financials and European financials were making new highs, Bank Nifty was like, uh-uh, right? Uh-uh, nope, right? The nutty dolphin, uh-uh, uh-uh, right? And then sure enough, they collapsed. And now here we are, new highs in US financials, new highs in European banks, and the nutty dolphin is back, uh-uh, uh-uh, right? And then meanwhile, everybody thinks the stocks are going higher, right? The consensus saying bulls, extreme bullishness. Look at the AAII, which isn't my favorite um, uh, sentiment indicator. Um, I think it's noisy and it's, it's not a big sample size, but it's, it's in conjunction with everything else, right? They're bullish, right? Look at the advisors and the AAII bull bear spread. They're bullish, right? They're bullish, guys. So all of these divergences are taking place as targets are being achieved and everybody thinks stocks are going up. What do you think about that? Now, I wanted to show, zoom out and really show some of the long-term trends here because what's happening short-term and these messes and these divergences, these are short-term. And I think they need to be put within the context of the bigger picture, the longer-term trends. So here we're looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is an uptrend, about halfway to its target, you know, a consolidation would be well deserved and it doesn't change that trend and transport same thing right doesn't change that trend consolidations here you know some some give back doesn't change these long term bigger implications you know when you look at old school dow theory semiconductors s p transports all making new all-time highs right so this was last week so these short-term divergences while they suggest messy for longer and these are things we haven't seen in a long time Bigger picture, the trends are still up, and you know, you, you're gonna have a hard time convincing me that things are about to completely fall apart like they did last year, which it was much easier to convince me because financials were below their 07 highs last year. So it was much easier for me to say short everything and buy bonds, get out of everything, right? That's not what's happening here. We're coming out of a 14 year base in financials, and uh, sh you know, short term digestion of those gains, a correction, a messy market doesn't change that. Look at the all country world index XUS. So this is the rest of the world outside the US running into those 08 highs. So the fact that we're a mess right at those 08 highs is, is not a coincidence. And we're in the camp that we do break out. And this is a breakout from a 13 year base. The question is, how long are we gonna have to wait? And I think we're gonna have to wait a lot longer than most investors wanna wait. Look at the Acqui XUS versus the Acqui with US, right? So you can see here with the United States making new highs without the united states right we're flirting with those 2018 highs and the reason i bring this up is because we're stuck in quite the predicament the acqui xus so the ticker symbol for this is acwx acwx was so acqui xus is below the 08 highs which we saw here right those are the 08 highs we're below that but we're above the 2018 highs so we're stuck in purgatory right here right so if we break out above the 2018 highs and we complete this massive base, that would be incredibly uh, constructive for it. However, if we were to break below those 2018 highs, that would be a big problem. So hence the purgatory. So 53 to the downside. If that breaks, things are about to get worse, in my opinion. But bigger picture, there's no evidence uh, that things are about to get substantially worse. It's mostly, it's, it's more of a messy market than the beginning of the end. Look at Europe coming out of this 20-year base. Okay, Euro stocks 50. This is the, 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 the Dow 30 of Europe, if you will. Coming out of this six-year base. It's not bearish. How long are we going to be in this consolidation? I think you could look at European banks at 20. If we're above 20, I think we're, pro we're probably out of the woods, you know, if we're holding above 20. You know, it probably means that the mess is mostly behind us. While we're stuck below 20, to me, that points to messy for longer. And what we haven't seen is an expansion in new lows. When you ask me, JC, what's next, right? If the world's gonna come up, fall apart, what would we expect to see next? Well, we see an expansion of new lows. It's a market of stocks. In this case, uh, a market of countries, <laughs> but the same principle, right? Stocks around the world have to fall apart. We haven't seen an expansion in new lows, right? Emerging markets have been the underperformer. We haven't seen an expansion of new lows, even in the weaker areas. Look at the S&P 500. Where are the new lows? There's nothing going on. 63-day lows, right? It was basically a quarter's time. Nothing. 
What we are seeing is expansion and breath in the defensive areas. Look at utilities, more stocks in the utilities making new 10 day, 21 day, 63 day highs, short term breath expansion in real estate, high dividend paying stocks, showing strength, expansion and breath. What we're not seeing expansion and breath is in small caps, right? As we discussed, you know, large cap breath, even mid cap breath looks fine. It's the small caps. Where are you guys? Where are you at? Right? They're the culprit. You can see it in the six month high list too, right? Pretty good in the large and mid caps, nowhere to be found on the small caps. So let's talk about what's happened over the last year, right? Over the last year, US stocks in blue, global stocks in orange, and then down here, bonds and gold, the biggest losers. These are the jaws of death, right? The alligator mouth, the crocodile mouth, closing. So that's the bet we want to make. This gap closes over the coming quarters. That's the bet that we want to make. By the way, if you're interested in the slides, like I said, I'll make sure to use the password. It's different. So info at allstarcharts.com password. It's different. And let's talk about commodities because here we're looking at our equally weighted commodities index. It's 33 commodities. So quarter precious metals, basic, uh, excuse me. I shouldn't say that. It's about a quarter base metals, industrial metals. You got a 15% energy. So 40% there are just energy and base metals breaking out to new highs. I think that's interesting. How about copper, 15-year base? Notice how it looks exactly like the CRB index. What if copper breaks out of this 15-year base? What does that mean for commodities? I think much higher. When we talk about messy markets, I think crude oil needs to be part of that conversation. Right? Because if we're below 66 in crude oil, it's a mess. We're below overhead supply. We're below overhead supply. Do I think we break out? Yes. Do I think we go to 76? Yes. Do I think we ultimately go higher than that? Yeah, probably. The question is, how long is it going to take to break above 66? And like I said before, I think it's going to take longer than most investors are willing to wait for it. And then when you look at the energy stocks, what's going on? We're stuck below those former lows. 2016 lows, 2018 lows. We broke last year. And that former support turned into resistance, which is perfectly normal. So how long is it going to take to break out? I don't know. Do I think we break out? Yes. How long is it going to take? I don't know. Like I said, probably longer than most investors are willing to wait, right? The market can remain irrational longer than we can remain solvent, right? That's what's going on here. Meanwhile, look at the agricultural index. It's an equally weighted ag index that we put together. Corn, beans, bean meal, bean oil, wheat, cotton, coffee, cocoa, sugar, right? Breaking out. When you look at the currencies, you know, we talk about the strength in commodities. We talk about this you know, commodity super cycle. With strength in the dollar in the first quarter, yen got slaughtered as we've discussed, right? Swissy, Euro, British pounds. Where was the strength? Aussie and CAD. Commodities oriented uh, currencies, right? Particularly Canadian dollar, even more so than Aussie, but same idea. So here you go, here's your wood, right? Here's, here's your morning wood, 2018 highs, breaking out of this base. We always say we wanna be buying smiley faces selling frowny faces buying frowny faces you know we want to be buying any pullbacks here down towards 84 right if we're above those 2018 highs we want to be long the wood global timber and forestry with a target of 111. and that whole lumber thing is not just lumber right people are like oh it's a bubble in lumber it's like well maybe it's a bubble in lumber but then if it's a bubble in lumber then maybe it's a lumber and a, a, a bubble in steel futures also and in iron ore futures, and in rebar futures, right? Maybe it's a, all of those things, right? Think about that. So we've got lumber, steel, iron ore, rebar, right? To me, these are all things that you need to build stuff, right? So if, if you're like, it's in a bubble in one, it's gotta be a bubble in all of them, or, Maybe there's just a lot of demand for, for to build stuff, right? Maybe that's what that is. That's what I think it is. Now, short term, here we are, lumber gold ratio hitting that extension target. So as great as these lumber new highs, rebar, iron ore, steel, all that stuff, objectives are being met, my friends. Objectives are being met. So let's talk about gold making new 20-year lows relative to the NASDAQ, right? One of the worst places in the world, no doubt about it. But could that be changing, right? Is this base that we've seen over the last decade 
Kind of like the one from the late 90s, early 2000s. Think it might be. Think it might be. So far, GDX trade is working out beautifully. So we want to be buyers of GDX if we were above 31 on this pullback, right? Resistance, 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 breakout, retest, right? 31, clean. We want to be taking profits at 43. Do, we, do I think we break out and head to 62? Yes. How long will it take to break out above 43? That I don't know. So that's where we want to be taking our profits for right now. How about bonds, right? Resistance, resistance, bonds stop going down. If bonds are above 114 on the IEF, this is the ETF that uh, tracks the um, the benchmark, 7 to 10-year yield. 114, if we're above that, we could be long IEF. Below that, we obviously do not, maybe not obviously, but I, to me, I would never want to be long IEF if we're below all of these former re resistance levels, right? That's 114. We only want to be long if we're above that. And it's interesting because while all this is happening, you know, targets being met on the S&P industrials, we're seeing the divergences in high beta, stables, right? All these, the Aussie yen, you know, gold stopped going down, bonds stopped going down, yen stopped going down, staples, utes, REITs are leaders. Like all these new things that we're seeing. This is the safety index that we construct. It's a volatility adjusted weighting of gold, treasury bonds, and Japanese yen. And what I see is this form of resistance turning into support. So if the safety index was ever going to rally, this would be a pretty logical place for that to happen. Form of resistance turning into support, not to mention the bullish divergence and momentum. So if the defensive areas were going to rally, this, again, would be a perfectly logical place for that to happen. So let's talk about a trade. Um, you know, I think we need to be very uh, picky uh, in this environment, right? Uh, we want to be very disciplined to our risk management levels. But I think there's going to be opportunities on both the long side and the short side. In this messy market, there will be winners and there will be losers. So we run our under the hood report every other Monday. And these are stocks that are showing an unusual increase in investor interest. So these could be stocks. Um, they could be uh, a... a, a, a Increase in, in options activity, uh, volume, insider trading, uh, spikes in social media mentions. Usually it's a healthy combination of a bunch of those. And then this is this week's report, or this week's scan, I should say. And, and just because it's on this list doesn't mean we want to buy it. In fact, we might want to short it. So this is a long and short scan. All we're doing is just getting... All we're doing is just going to see what everyone's all making a fuss about right a bunch of maniacs are now paying extra attention to these names we want to find out why we're not so much why but if we're maybe interested in participating as well either buying along with them or fading them and feeding the ducks and taking the other side right so here's a good one intelia therapeutics stood out to me and tla it's a mid-cap biotech if i'm not mistaken it's a biotech is it a mid-cap is it a mid-cap yes in fact it is $5 billion mid-cap biotech. See, I haven't lost my touch. It's pretty good, right? Intelia Therapeutics and TLA, we want to be long only if it's above 71. This one comes from our under the hood report. And TLA, we want to be long and TLA only if it's above 71. So if it's not above 71, we do not want to be long. Only above 71 with a price target of 110. But if it's below 71, we want to leave it alone because it's a mess. Only above 71 with a target near 110 and if you're interested in these slides make sure to email info at allstarcharts.com don't forget to use the password it's different otherwise who knows what presentation you're going to get so make sure to use the password it's different so those are my charts so let's take some questions um right so jc what would the market need to show for things to get worse well i think you know, because again, we're in the camp that the market is in a, a range-bound, messy market. Sectors are rotating, defensive areas are, are have turned into leaders. But it doesn't change the longer-term trend. And the longer-term trend is still that stocks are up. So what's it going to take for me to be like, oh man, things are getting much worse? It's an expansion in downside breath. Right? And a, a huge spike in new lows that we haven't seen in a while, years. Big spike in new lows, and we just haven't seen that. It's more of like year two behavior. Go back to 2010, right? Year two of that bull market. Go back to um, 2004. 
year two of that bull market after the 03 uh, initial rally. Go back to 1976, right? After that 75 uh, initial rally. Not that I was around in 1976, uh, but I have the charts, right? I've studied the history. It's very year two. It's digesting those gains. What's wrong with that? All right. Uh, so anyway, to answer the question, downside breath, right? Huge spikes in 21-day lows, 63-day lows. That would be the first thing, right? Don't look at the new 52-week low list because we're so far from new 52-week lows that by the time it actually shows up there, you'll have seen it in that closer time frame. So again, 10-day low list, 21-day low list, 63-day low list. And again, the Y21 and 63, you got about 21 days in a month. You got about 63 days in a quarter, right? Trading days. All right. Um, JC, what's your favorite place to be positioned right now? You know, I think it goes back to your time horizon, identifying your time horizon, right? Um, are you a longer-term investor? Are you trying to make money today, this week, um, right? Where do you want to be? Um, you know, for me, tactically, looking out weeks and months, I think heavy cash positions continue to, uh, will continue to pay off, right? Heavy cash positions. Um, take a look at those gold and precious metals areas uh, that are starting to perk up for the first time in like forever. Gold has sucked for so long. And now we're seeing signs where it's it's not making new lows anymore. Bullish divergences in Newmont and uh, GDX. God forbid the silver gold ratio starts going up. So that's an interesting area, most definitely. Take a look at Ethereum. Uh, I know for financial advisors, things like that, that doesn't really help. But for traders, market participants, 2250 on the Ethereum. If we're above 2250, I think you could be long with a target of 3600 on the Ethereum on the Ether. Um, I'm long. I own I own a bunch. Uh, 2250 is my level. We only want to be long if we're above that. You know, heavy cash levels. Take a look at that bond trade. IEF above 114. GDX above 31. Uh, take a look at Newmont. Has shown some relative strength there. Again, big cash positions. Individual names with. Uh, very strict stop losses if you find opportunities uh, with a favorable risk versus reward profile you know i'm confident in this environment that there will be winners on the long side there will be winners on the short side too and there will be you know if you have options strategies that you incorporate where you're collecting income right and while people are getting chopped up making donations you're collecting those donations those are good strategies too in, in my opinion they have been working i think they continue to work um and um and then I, that's it guys you know it's it's really what i have today we we got a couple of questions i'm trying to think did any other questions come in that i didn't write down um i did have another one regarding the dollar and interest rates regarding if if interest rates were going to go up the dollar has to go up together like i just want to make this clear that is not true i don't know who made that up I've heard it before. It makes no sense whatsoever based on reality. You know, go back <laughs> the dollar and interest rates. Not only do they not move together, in many cases, they moved inversely to one another, <laughs> right? So I'm just not seeing uh, that at all. I think overthinking, well, if interest rates are going to do up and the dollar is going to do that, overthinking that is always uh, detrimental, in my opinion. It certainly uh, hurt me when I've gone down that rabbit hole of intermarket analysis you know, four derivatives down the road, like, well, if emerging markets do this and the dollar does that and then rates do this and then boom, we're going to buy Microsoft. It's like, what? Right? Like, if you don't like bonds, just sell bonds, right? If you think rates are going to go up, right? Just sell bonds. So, uh, you know, trading four derivatives down the road and overcomplicating the intermarkets, I think is foolish. And the dollar and rates having to go up together is just not true. Like, just go back and look at history. Don't take my word for it. Just go look at facts, right? Go look at history. It's just not true. Again, I'm JC Peretz, allstarcharts.com. Uh, come say what's up. Uh, find me on the interwebs at All Charts on Twitter, StockTwits, Instagram, YouTube, and Clubhouse. Thanks, guys. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.